UFC. Super Bowl 48, the Daytona 500, and the UEFA Champions League final. The world's biggest events are on Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports! Welcome to the Chevrolet World Series pregame show on Fox, powered by MLB Network. 1918. It's been 95 years since the Red Sox won the crown in front of the Fenway Faithful. Tonight, they have that chance. Led here by their ace, Lester pitched another classic in game five. John Lester has been dominant here tonight. And Koji closed out the cup. Koji brings it and strikes out. Malbert's got it, and the Red Sox win game five. So now, it's do or die for St. Louis. But the kid takes the ball tonight, ready to repeat his game two dominance. It will be either a historic night in the hub, or we will see you tomorrow night. Why go anywhere else? Game six is next, right here on Fox. Only once in baseball history has a team won a World Series title the season after a last place finish. A boisterous Beantown crowd hopes the Red Sox can become the second tonight. It's game six of the World Series on Fox between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Boston Red Sox. Welcome inside friendly Fenway. Matt Vaskersian alongside Harold Reynolds, former National League MVP Jimmy Rollins, and fashioning the latest from the Hawk Harrelson line, two-time American League All-Star. You better AJ believe Krasinski. this is my shout-out to Hawk, 67, Boston and Cardinals. Here you go, Hawk. This is a mind-bender just for you. Let's start with the Cardinals. Only six times, Harold, in World Series history has a team come back from a 3-2 deficit to win two on the road and claim a title. They're up against it tonight. No doubt, but you worry, you worry about Game 7 if you get there. They got Waka going tonight, so I think they're comfortable with where they're at, even though it is 3-2. They feel good about the young man. You have to. You got the guy that has pitched the best in the postseason, you know, throughout Major League Baseball this year. So if you're going to win, he gives you your best chance. You have to score runs, but you got the guy you want on the mound. Yeah, you guys might feel comfortable with the Cardinals, but I'll, I'd rather be the Red Sox right now at home in front of this crazy crowd, up 3-2 with a chance to win a first World Series here in a really long time. It, yeah, I'd much rather be a Red Sox right now. You know, making things more interesting in this series and for the Cardinals in particular, the fact that their trip yesterday from St. Louis to Boston, which was supposed to be just a quick jump, was delayed by seven hours due to a mechanical problem. Is this a big deal for the Cardinals at all? Well, it's a big deal because you got stuck on the plane for seven hours. But other than that, no, you get to the city, you get ready, you get yourself ready to play ball. Well, the flight has never ruined the way I played the baseball the next day. <laughs> Obviously, you don't want to be on a plane all that long, but you, you, you plan to be on the road. So you take it as part of something that happens. The players are fine. The wives are fine. It's the kids, man. The kids, Jimmy. <laughs> iPads and nuts stuff only last for so long. My kids would be going crazy after their iPads die and the, the movie players die. They'd be like, what do I do? Where do I go? But they did a great job. <laughs> for a little bit more on the Cardinals' longer than expected trip, Ken Rosenthal is with St. Louis third baseman David Fries. Thanks, Matt. David, I know you had an interesting journey yesterday. What was it like, and how much will it affect the team tonight? Oh, it's not going to affect us at all. We actually had a pretty good time on the plane, um, just hanging out. Obviously, it was a long day, but uh, we all we're all rested up, ready to go. Michael Walker tonight. How confident are you in him? And how confident are you that you can still win this series? Yeah, I think we're real confident uh, in all aspects. I think uh, we have a good shot of winning tonight. You know, I know Boston uh, believes the same thing, that they can go out there and, and finish this up. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a dogfight. But, uh, you know, we're pumped to have a walk on the mound. And I think we got to do our job offensively and, and put up some runs. David, thanks a lot. Now over to Aaron Andrews. You were telling me the other day, I don't know what to say to people when they ask me why I'm in such a zone. I was born for this. Have you ever seen the ball this well before in your career? I have. The thing is that, uh, you know, this is this is a stage where, you know, there's not 30 teams playing. Yeah. It's only two teams playing, and whenever you make some noise, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious. But, yeah, I have some time like that this season, this year, you know, and you've seen the ball well, and and getting it done. You said, I'm not thinking, and I don't want to start. Well, tonight, think about it. You're up 
three games to two. Mike Napoli is back in the lineup. The Fenway crowd is here. Everybody's already nuts at batting practice. What's the vibe inside that clubhouse? It's good. It's good. I mean, but uh, it's not like, you know, we feel like we won this. No, it's not like that. You know, we got to come out. Like I say, the Cardinals the counter have a really good team. They had a great pitching. And they're giving a great effort. So, got to come in and play the game just like we have and, and try to make it happen. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Maddie, back over to you. Aaron, thanks. Right to the Red Sox starting lineup. Back out there tonight is Shane Victorino after missing games four and five with the back injury. David Ross will catch in the third straight and Mike Napoli most notably back in there for the first time since game two at first base batting number four the protection policy behind David Ortiz who Harold remains the hottest hitter in this series. Yeah you look at the 360 on the board there that's a little deceiving why because he's 11 for his last 15 11 for 15 in the World Series so I'm going to take you through what is he doing to make it so special one the time is impeccable the leg kick the foot down and he's hitting everything in the zone. You you look at the quadrants that he's reaching, and they haven't been able to figure out a way to get him out as he continues to just pepper the zone. Look at where he's hitting these balls at. And right here, the ball down the middle and away. And I worry about Walker tonight. Why? Because the last time he faced him, second time around, he gets the changeup, he drives it over the wall. But Jimmy, he's done a nice job of covering the strike zone. And right now, there is an A pitch that he can't hit. I, I, I was looking at that, and I noticed there was a little itty bitty spot down and in. But I don't think you want to mess with down and in. To a left-handed hitter. You know better than I would. Hey, if I'm catching tonight, if I'm Yadi Molina, I'm slopping him to death. I'm throwing all the soft stuff. I know David for a long time, and he gets frustrated. If you just keep throwing him slow and slow and slow, he'll get frustrated. He will get out of his zone if you let him. To the Cardinals lineup for game six. This is the group Mike Matheny hopes to stave off World Series elimination with. And some notable matchup numbers against John Lackey. Carlos Beltran, one for 12 against him. Matt Holliday, just one for 10 against John Lackey, and what about the Red Sox starter tonight, AJ? Well, they have a tall order literally tonight. That's all text and John Lackey. The thing John Lackey does better than most guys is he changes speeds on his breaking ball, and he throws it anytime he wants. Look at these pitches and look at the different breaks on them. 78 right there, 1 0. There's another one, 81. These are all just different speeds, different breaking balls. He has the ability to change speeds and change his break. It's amazing how well he's done this. He's learned to become a different pitcher. Watch Matt Carpenter right here. Oh boy, what did he just throw me? If I'm a Carpenter, hitter tonight, Jimmy. I'm going up there. I'm sitting sorry, buddy. I'm sitting on a breaking ball because you're going to get one. John Lack, especially in a big situation, he's going to throw something soft to these Cardinals, and it's worked for him this whole postseason. It definitely has, and that's part of making the adjustment, expecting what he's going to do and sitting on it. Guys, one thing that worries me is that he came in the game the other day. I know it was a throw day, but those are stress pitches. He's only thrown 100 pitches in a game one time in the last 53 days, so this is going to end up being a bullpen game for the Red Sox. Jero Michael Waka undefeated in the postseason. He's undefeated after Cardinal losses in the postseason. More importantly, a lot on him tonight, of course. Uh, definitely, a lot is on him, and he's been in this situation following the Cardinal loss and it being a big game. And we can take a look at the tape right here. What makes him so effective? He has swing and miss stuff. He doesn't waste a lot of time. He doesn't go 0-2. The next thing you know is 3-2. Your team's out of it. They're rolling their eyes like, just put this guy away. When you do that, you keep your team in the game. You have a rhythm. And the other side of it is you get guys to swing early. When you are throwing a lot of strikes, you pound the zone, you're going to make them swing a bat. They have an option to be 0-2 real quick or to make quick outs because he isn't giving up hits and he isn't giving up runs. So if you're the Cardinals, you feel good with that on the mound, knowing that he has swing and miss stuff, and after following a loss, he's undefeated. He works fast too, doesn't he? You know why, Jimmy? They had a 20-second pitch clock. <laughs> Never heard of such a thing? They were like, it's not a shot clock like they have in college basketball. 20 seconds he had to throw the ball in college. It's a rule, a new rule in college baseball. I'm all for it. Heck, when I hit, I don't want to waste no time, so let's get up there and let's swing the bat and make these guys throw the ball. Well, that's well, the, other thing, the other thing that happens is your defense, you talked about the defense, they're ready to go. Nothing worse as a defender than your pitcher standing around. Now you stand around. Get it going. We need to change this and implement that. I like that. 20 right, seconds. Guys, as we inch closer to game time, it's time for our first break. And up next, he stands 5'7", but plays with the biggest heart in the league. Tim McCarver gets inside the chip on the shoulder of Red Sox second baseman Dustin Pedroia. I just said, I've chopped down bigger guys than you before to get into a fight. I heard he didn't laugh. He didn't laugh? That's oh, good. 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 <laughs>
Chevrolet. Find new roads. Well, the Red Sox have lost consecutive home games only once since the end of July. If they can keep that alive tonight, they're going to walk out of here tonight. 2013 World Series champs. During his 21 year playing career Tim McCarver shared the field with some of the game's all time greats Hall of Famers tough guys baseball lifers. There is one current player however who Tim considers to be one of the best he's ever seen play Red Sox second baseman Dustin Pedroia. How is this year different from 2007 your rookie season. 2007 I was just trying to learn from all the other guys now I have a little bit more responsibility with the leadership role with the team you can't worry about yourself as much even if I have a tough at bat and I ground into a double play I can't show as much emotion because it could wear on another guy if they think I'm down that might bring them down you battle the fact that you're five feet seven <laughs> that bothers you doesn't it yeah I mean it, it did you know, it doesn't anymore. I mean, I had a scout say, man, if you were three or four inches taller, you know, we'd take you with our first pick. I'm like, man, you'd take me with your first pick if I was, you know, that that much like this? That stinks, man. I got to get on my mom and dad for, <laughs> for being short. But um, it all worked out. I mean, it gives you an edge to prove people wrong and uh, helps me out with ground balls because I'm so low to the ground, I guess. <laughs> this low center of gravity gives Dustin a unique perspective. In a game of inches, he is highly creative and the game's quickest thinker. And at no time was this more evident than versus the Detroit Tigers. <laughs> wow. I had it played out in my mind. This is kind of crazy. I was going to tag Vic, throw it to Knapp, and hopefully Prince froze enough to where Knapp could throw him out at home and get a triple play. That's how I was thinking in my mind. And then you're thinking triple play. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, that's great, though. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking so fast. I'm like, man, I, I have issues. You know, I, I might want to settle down. Let's, you know, calm down, make sure we get out. You've always impressed, I think, everybody that you care more about baseball than money. And I think you proved that in April. Tell us about that dinner. Uh, me and my agents, uh, the owners, and Ben, they kind of asked me how the team was. And obviously, I'm going to say, yeah, we're going to win the World Series. They kind of thought I was nuts. I'm like, that's, that's my goal every year is to show up and win our last game. If, if we don't do that, I'm devastated. Every year, if you don't win, it rips your heart out. And I don't want to feel that. And that's... I think they thought I was nuts, man. Why? Why, why did they uh, think you were nuts? I mean, you don't know I, how the free agent... If I told you when we got to spring training, we are going to win the World Series, how would you look at me? Probably like I'm nuts, huh? Probably. That's probably how they probably. looked at me a little bit. <laughs> and and ultimately, you end up, ended up signing for a lot less money had you gone on the market. Yeah, probably. This is this is my home. I mean, it, I don't, I don't want to play. These, the Red Sox drafted me in 2004, and... Every other team had their chance to draft me, and they didn't. Are you paying the Red Sox back? Hopefully if we win, yeah. I want to pay them back with championships. And I want the Red Sox to be known for, you know, we do things right. When you, when you come in to play the Red Sox, you know that it's going to be all about baseball and winning. I love this interview. <laughs> I hope you do. Yeah, it's I awesome. mean, this is, this, <laughs> it really is awesome. The former AL MVP, certainly a, a hero to the vertically challenged and to everybody who's a member of Red Sox Nation. And Jimmy, along with David Ortiz, maybe even more so than Big Poppy, he's the heart and soul of this team. So he definitely is. I got a chance to play with Dustin and the uh, WBC, and you understand, you know, playing with him, why he's such a personality and why he's so infectious. He comes with an intensity every single day, but he does it with a smile. And you can't help but love a guy that goes out there, talks trash, and gets it done. He comes up with stories and you hear things like this can't be true and you meet him and you say yeah it probably was. Has there ever been a guy that's willed himself to be a better player than Dustin Pedroia? If you look at him his talents and his skill set doesn't match what he does on the field. He wills himself. And that 2008 MVP he won he can thank the Chicago White Sox. Ozzie Game gave him all the press after he went about I think 14 for 15 off us in a series here in Fenway. We got him out and it was only because he hit a ball I think to the warning track that our center fielder caught. When it was throwing those pitches. Talk about yeah exactly. And talk about talking trash. I gotta tell this quick story because this is who 
Pedroia is to me. It's the second season plan. Joe Maurer's catching. He's facing the Twins. He fouls off 10 pitches, and Maurer says, Joe, I, he, he turns to Dusty and says, I don't know what to throw you. He goes, don't worry about it, Joe. Neither does the rest of the league. <laughs> Next pitch gets a knock. But second base is defined by the pivot, and to me, that's the difference here when we start talking about him is his pivot. And what he does so well, not worrying about getting hit, is you find the base, you locate it, but he's consistent with his pattern. He gets his left foot on the bag. This allows you to be vertical, be able to make adjustments, and two hands on the pivot and get rid of the ball. Now when you get pressure in a situation like this, you get up and get rid of it, and you wonder why is he able to do that. He's consistent. The left foot on the bag, two hands with the pivot, and if you get in the air and they may hit your leg, you're not going to get hurt. That's why he plays so many games. You may see him get hit, but Matt, he's not worried about getting hit or the pressure being on him because he's consistent in what he does. I love this guy. He's one of my favorite players. He's got an attitude like one of the members of the Bad News Bears and a skill set of a member of the 2013 Red Sox. Jimmy, I think Jimmy should talk about the pivot. I mean, I'm the guy trying to break it up. Jimmy, how the heck do you guys get out of the way when someone like me is coming at you? So you got to know how to dance. got to have some rhythm around the back. And he's one of the guys, along with Robinson Cano, if that seems like you get it to him, they can turn anything. He's got everything coming at him. It's the second baseman that has the courage out there. All right, guys, time for us to take another quick break. The Cardinals and Red Sox have been involved in some of the most notable Game 6 moments in World Series history. Will there be more magic tonight?
Chevrolet World Series pregame show on Fox, powered by MLB Network. We are almost set for game six, and back in 1975, Louis Tion started it, and Carlton Fisk with his memorable walk-off home run on that rainy October night ended it. They have thrown out the ceremonial first pitch prior to game six tonight. I love that stuff. Absolutely love it. Pudge and El Tiante back together again. Tomorrow, when we wake up, what's Jimmy's Jam going to tell us about this game? Jimmy Jam is going to say, Sox, ring it in. They're playing for another ring, getting their third ring in this 10-year decade that the Sox have reigned with the win tonight. Well, I love your prediction, Jimmy, but you're wrong. So here we go. Brzezinski's press right here. Walk of the walk, talk the talk. Walker again, does it again, 5-0 in the postseason. He's going to deal again tonight in Fenway Park in front of this crowd. We're coming back tomorrow. Well, I, I guess I'm the decider here, but I'm on the side of baseball. Seventh heaven. We're going to see a seventh game. These two teams are too evenly matched. It's going to be another game. We'll be back here tomorrow. Brzezinski's press is uh, filled with clever wordplay, but there's clearly no fashion editor at that publication. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all can't pull this off, Matty. You go for the, you guys all went for the calm, cool, collected suit. I figured I'd step it out. It's a clinch again. Let's go. You know, oh, everybody yeah, has kind of waited like for that. the bloom to come off the Michael Walker Rose in the postseason. It hasn't so far, and Harold, you're saying he's going to be strong again tonight. I think he'll be strong. The big thing to me is going to be a bullpen game, and I think at this point in time, I'm leaning more toward the Cardinal bullpen. Uh, there's definitely going to be a strong performance by Michael, but it's a, are they going to score enough runs for him? And they haven't done that so far. We talked about the memorable game sixes that these two teams have been involved in in World Series history. One about to begin. Time to send it down to PA announcer Henry Mahegan. And now, to present our national anthem, we welcome the beloved Boston band, whose music is part of the soundtrack of Fenway Park. A band now loved all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Boston's own, the Dropkick Murphys.
19-12. It is the site of game number six of this 2013 World Series. It's Fenway Park. It's the Cardinals and the Red Sox. And now welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Joe Buck. Tim McCarver is coming right up. What a series this has been so far. And so now here at Fenway Park, Boston has a chance to clinch in front of the home crowd here at Fenway for the first time since 1918. Who's standing in their way? A kid who, I guess, if you weren't in St. Louis by mid September, you didn't even know how to pronounce his name. It's pronounced <laughs> Waka. And everybody knows Waka around baseball now. And that's because this guy's been so good. And Tim, he's already been on the mound, on the road with his team facing elimination this postseason. It's an unusual combination that he has, too. Fastball changeup, not fastball curve or fastball slider. He threw over 100 pitches his last outing against the Red Sox. Almost 40 percent change ups. Unbelievable. I guess that's why he is 4 0 in the postseason and check the opponent's average against him only 122. Guess who got him in game two in that start when he was matched up that night against John Lackey is named David Ortiz and David Ortiz right now just seems like an impossible out. Uh, we've talked about it. The ball's got to look uh, bigger to him. Consider, consider this. David Ortiz of course a power hitter. Six years he has struck out over 100 times. One year 145 times. That means that he swings through a lot of pitches and he's only swung through three of 73 pitches against Cardinal pitching. This series that's remarkable. It's got your attention. That's got baseball's attention right now. This World Series has the sports world's attention. We get set for game six coming up right now. Game six of the World Series. There's just something special about it where crazy things always seem to happen especially with these two teams. A series that has already seen some of the strangest endings of all time. One can only dream of what tonight has in store. Here we go again. Game six.
World Series Game 7. John Lackey as a rookie got the ball and the win as the Angels beat the Giants. And then we go back to ALCS game number three when he stared down the Tigers and Justin Verlander got a one to nothing win. And then out of the bullpen game four in St. Louis pitched a scoreless eighth inning and pitched around an error. A big reason why the Red Sox won that game and they lead this best of seven series three games to two. He gets the ball here tonight. The World Series on Fox is sponsored by MasterCard. Preferred card of Major League Baseball since 1997. Here's a lineup that John Lackey will face. Brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live boss. Matt Carpenter leads off at second base. Carlos Beltran back second and right. Then Matt Holliday, Alan Craig back at DH. Yadier Molina hits fifth. Matt Adams, the rookie first baseman. David Freeze hitting seventh. John Jay in center and Daniel Descalso is at shortstop against the right-hander and he bats ninth. The opening pitch will be brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. And while we look at this 10 game winner during the regular season but a guy who's found another gear in October we remind you for coverage of this game in Spanish. Please tune in to Fox Deportes. Take a look at the scouting report on John Lackey. Two runs better at home, only a 2.47 earned run average here in Boston. Increasingly more curveballs. That's pretty easy to tell. The Detroit Tigers can tell you that. And will he be in another clincher? We'll find out in at least nine innings. Take a look at the defense for the Red Sox behind John Lackey. And there's one guy in front of him. Johnny Gomes in left, Jacoby Ellsbury in center, and Shane Victorino back in there. He's in right. He just was awarded a gold glove. Same for Dustin Pedroia, the second baseman. Napoli at first. Steven Drew, the shortstop. Xander Bogart's the rookie at third, and it's David Ross doing the catching. And off we go in game six. Strike one. First thing on the Cardinals' minds, take the crowd out of this game. It's going to be tough unless they score early. 47 degree night. The 1. Just outside. Carpenter, then Beltron, then Holiday here in the first inning. Cardinals trying to win tonight to force a game seven tomorrow night. Here's a 1 1. Up and away, two and one. Harold Reynolds in our pregame talked a lot about Lackey and him coming out of the bullpen in game four and how that may affect him here tonight. That was his side day to work. Here's a two one. Two and two. You think that relief appearance affects John Lackey at all tonight? I don't think so. No. 17 pitches pitched around an error it was impressive in the eighth the adrenaline will take care of those 17 pitches 2-2 two -two. Well hit into left back is Gomes on the track for out number one And a loud out to start the night for Matt Carpenter who's now five for 23 in this World Series. We've come all the way around and John Hirschbeck who started this World Series behind the plate has made his way to first. Jim Joyce is the home plate umpire. Mark Wagner at second. Dana DeMute at third. Paul Emmel in left. And Bill Miller in right. Here's Beltron. Ball one outside. Beltron one for 12 in his career against John Lackey. Two and oh. Carlos, when his teams have faced elimination in his postseason career, he's been involved in nine such games. He's hit 333 with two homers, five RBIs. There are his numbers against Lackey. And he rips one at Pedroia. What a play. Two on. What a position. Deep, shallow. Right or deep second on the in between hop to get Beltran. 
any other left uh, left handed hitting hitter there is no way they make that play you talk about precision on the shift you just saw it it's one thing to be there and then it's another to feel cleanly that tough hop yeah Victorino's made a couple of throws from that area <laughs> during the postseason trying to get the nine three put out here's holiday strike one. Matt Holliday is one for ten against Lackey. Beltron was jumping on a 2-0 pitch, hit it hard, is a loud second out. And now Holiday to Napoli. Funny bounce, race to the bag, and Napoli wins it. Cardinals go in order in the first. Bottom half rolls in. Here at Boston, the rookie Michael Waka rolls out, no score. Sponsored by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live Moss and by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Starting lineup for Boston here for game six, brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. Jacoby Ellsbury leads it off in center. Dust Dustin Pedroia is in that number two spot with David Ortiz, the DH hitting third. Napoli cleans up. Johnny Gomes is in left batting fifth. Shane Victorino back in there. Missed a start with a bad back. Actually two as he was a late scratch in St. Louis. He's in right. Xander Bogarts is a third. Stephen Drew bats eighth. And David Ross third straight start for the Boston catcher. And here he is. Michael Waka. 4-0 this postseason. Look at those numbers. Fastball change up out of the same arm slot that's very important to get the same effect about oh, 10 miles per hour difference in the fastball and change up he threw 10 breaking balls in his first outing out of 104 he had a chance to pitch his first postseason start with his club facing elimination in game four of the divisional series in Pittsburgh and he pitched a no hitter into the eighth. Here's Ellsbury. Strike one. Jacoby Ellsbury, four for 20 in this World Series. And Waka going back to his last regular season start. Over his last five, he has owned right handed batters. And now he owns that bat from Jacoby Ellsbury as Jacoby broke it. 
Nothing into the count. We talked to John Farrell about the most impressive thing about Waka. He said he can he can jam hitters with a four seam fastball. Pitchers usually use that pitch for speed and not jamming guys. But Waka's different. He throws it more heavy or more heavily than most pitchers do. Unbelievable numbers. The 0 2. He starts with a strikeout and a 96 mile per hour fastball. And so much for being intimidated by the big stage. <laughs> Three pitches, one out. Fastball away. We saw a 91 mile per hour pitch. On a fastball 96 miles per hour to get Ellsbury. Here's Pedroia. Here's a shot in the left. Down the line. It is foul. Just foul. And Pedroia, who almost had one of those in the ALCS, nearly put his team on top. This reminds me of the second pitch of the ball game against Colorado in 2007. Second pitch, high fastball from Jeff Francis. That one was fair. This one is foul. Here's the 0 1. From a near home run to a quiet out. Two gone. Over the last five starts, as Ortiz walks in, Michael Walker has held right handed batters. To five hits in 67 at bats. This is not a right handed batter. <laughs> no. And this does not appear to be a batter that was born on this planet. The way he's swinging the bat right now, hitting 733 in this World Series compared to 151 for the rest of his teammates. He has carried this offense. Strike one. Six strikes in a row from one. Ortiz got one over the monster and left in game two against Walker. One of his two home runs in this World Series. That's strike two. So close. Walker then got him. And now drives Ortiz off the plate at two and two. Big rip. Ninety seven from Walker. You talk about electricity in a ballpark. It is intense here at Fenway Park here for game six. If Waka faces David Ortiz, stays in the game long enough to face him three or four times, it's going to be that type of bat every time. Change of bounces in for count. Between Waka 
and Ortiz. Breaking ball misses ball four to our walk. Lockett did not throw his curveball until the fourth inning of his first outing. And that 3 2 curveball missed. And now Ortiz has got the guy behind him that he didn't have batting behind him in St. Louis, and that's Mike Napoli. Ortiz, the DH, Napoli, the first baseman, and a guy who is still haunted by game six. That matchup between the Cardinals and the Rangers two years ago. Two years and two days ago, October 27th. Strike one. He was the catcher for the Texas Rangers when David Freeze tied the game in the ninth inning, won the game in the 11th. St. Louis won the next night. Napoli gets another chance at Freeze and the Cardinals, this time wearing a Red Sox uniform. Here's the 0 1. Strike two. Michael Walker, the 19th overall pick by the Cardinals last year in June. Misses with a changeup, ball one. A two out walk to Ortiz. A strikeout ends the inning. And in the first game six here at Fenway Park since 1975, Dustin Pedroia. Did all he could to guide it fair like Fisk. Yeah. No score after one.
Uh, Cardinals have scored only two runs in the first three innings total of all five games. That's 15 batters, only two runs across. And for the Red Sox, don't wait for game seven. They want to win it tonight, of course. Alan Craig didn't wait. He goes after the first pitch from Lackey, strike one. Craig, a 315 hitter, 13 home runs, 97 RBIs. Before he missed the majority of the final month of the regular season. Neither team is hitting. No. Other than Ortiz. That's it. I mean, the yeah. Cardinals as a group are hitting 218. The Red Sox are hitting 205. For John Farrell, the difference has been John Lester on the mound and David Ortiz at the plate. Here's a 1 1. Craig, strike two. John Lackey, the 35 year old, lives in Fort Worth, Texas. He's pitching this October. Brilliantly for the Red Sox. He's 1 2. Fouled back. That was hittable. Middle of the plate fastball. Right under the letters. Alan Craig can hit that pitch. Just fouled it back. Lackey was signed before the 2010 season. A big winner with the Angels. Won 14 games in 2010. Here's a 1 2. Outside. 12 and 12 in that disappointing 2011 when the Red Sox collapsed. In September and Lackey didn't pitch last year as he recovered from Tommy John surgery. This year won 10 games. He has found a new gear in October. His 2 2. Full count. Lackey making his 16th career postseason start. Juan Nieves, the Red Sox pitching coach. Three two pitch. Craig with that sprained left foot. That if you come back too soon, you destabilize that foot. Who knows how long it takes to get right again? Join the roster for the World Series. And he hits a rocket into left. Dolls will play it off the wall, and that's a single all the way for Alan Craig to start the second. Craig running better tonight than he did in game five. This is a fastball out over the plate. And a line drive from Craig over the head of Johnny Gomes. And another dent. Wall and ball. That 37 foot high green monster here at Fenway. That thing has taken a beating over the years. It went out harder than it came in at 101. Gomes played it well. Craig at first. Here's Molina. Straight one. Yadier Molina has been a part of a lineup when his team has faced elimination in the postseason 14 times. He's hit 327. And his team has won 10 of those 14 games. Strike two. Matt Adams, the rookie first baseman on deck. Here's the 2 Foul back. Molina very good at changing his swing with two strikes. Loves to go to right field. Cardinals not a power laden team, but a very good hitting team with two strikes. They know what they're doing. That's why they're here. in left field back to back singles as Craig and Molina connect off lackey two on nobody out 
Another fat part of the plate. Cut fastball. Just hammered by Molina. During the postseason, any manager's moves are criticized, second guessed, first guessed, third guessed. Whether you're Mike Matheny or you're John Farrell, at some point, somebody in your lineup's got to get a big hit. And that's the case for St. Louis. It's Matt Adams who takes high ball one. Say what you want about pitching changes, and it should have been this guy instead of that guy out of the bullpen. You took your starter out too soon. Whatever it may be, somebody has to get a hit. Here's the 1 0. Strike one. For Matt Adams, he played at Slippery Rock. 6'3, 260 from Pennsylvania. Ranked third among National League rookies, hits and RBIs. Nickname is Big City. He was dubbed that by David Freeze, and it's stuck. Here's a 1 1. 2 and 1. Adams at 316 during the division series against the Pirates. He is only 8 for 40 since. More than any other Cardinal hitter. Maybe hitters on either side. He likes the ball down. The 2 1. That's well hit in the left. Back is Gomes and a leap and a catch. And it's two on one out. John Lackey made Adams reach for the ball. When you make a hitter reach for the ball, you rob him of his power. That ball off the plate away. And Adams kind of waved at it. Nice play, Gomes. The Cardinals in this World Series do not have an RBI out of their six through nine spots. David Freeze has been a part of that. And that group in general is hit 161. Freeze three out of 15. He bats with two on one out. He typically wants, knows what to do in game six. As he started for St. Louis two years ago, takes inside ball one. Joe, you wonder on the base hit to the outfield with Alan Craig on at second base, if third base coach Jose Aquindo will send him. That foot really giving him problems. Yeah. Good pitch by Lackey, ball and a strike. Tight breaking ball out of the strike zone. Good pitch by Lackey. Freeze is at three home runs when his team has faced elimination in a ball game in the postseason. 1 1. On the outside corner. Strike two. during the regular season hit 330 with runners in scoring position different story in this World Series they led baseball the count evens two and two at 330 the highest ever recorded back into the middle 70s with runners in scoring position the top five out of six guys in the National League were Cardinals in that department John Mabry, their hitting coach. Watching a 2 2 to David Freeze. Full count. Now you can't send the runners with Alan Craig on at second base.
And David Freeze has been one frustrated hitter this postseason. Stranding 15 runners. Here's John Jay. He does not have an RBI in this World Series, just two out of 14. Jay during the regular season drove in 67, hit 276. Cardinals had two on, nobody out. Hits by Craig and Molina. Adams fly to left, Freeze fly to right. It's up to John Jeff. Sometimes as a catcher, you cross yourself up. You're impetuous back there. You're trying to give the sign as quickly as possible. There's a sequence, and you put down the wrong one. You said, whoa, wait a minute. That's what David Ross did. Jay. Takes another strike. It's on two. That gets away, and that's a big wild pitch. Huge with a running speed of Alan Craig, the lead runner now at third, and Yadier Molina at second base. David Ross goes at this the wrong way. You don't backhand balls in the dirt, but you try to go down with the breaking ball, skips off the heel of the glove, and a wild pitch on Lackey, but a ball that David Ross normally corrals. One and two on Jay. Second and third, two out. Second inning, no score. Stuck him out. Lacking not as precise so far tonight, but just as effective and just as pumped up. Bottom of the second at Fenway Park, game six, no score.
by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Defense is important in October. And that has been proven this entire month. Catch the top defensive plays and enter for a chance to win an all new 2014 Chevy Silverado at ChevyBaseball.com. Bottom of the second rolls in, and for the Red Sox, that means Gomes, Victorino, and Bogarts against Michael Walker. The Cardinals pitching has averaged over 10 strikeouts per nine innings pitched in this series. Walker struck out two in the first. That drops in for strike one. That's a third curveball that Waka is featured and as we said he didn't throw his first one in his first start until the fourth inning. Here's the 0 one. Back to back. One a strike the next miss the ball and a strike. Johnny Gomes has one hit in this World Series and it was the three run shot in game four. Here's a one one. That's in the center. That's a base hit to start the second. Shane Victorino walks in back in the lineup after missing games four and five with the bad back and how about the shoes. Let's go down to Ken Rosenthal. Those shoes actually were designed by a friend of Victorino's in Philadelphia and Shane encouraged me to tweet out a photo of the shoes before the game. I was happy to oblige and I must say Joe the fashionistas on Twitter approved. <laughs> Victorino takes a ball low. His back has bothered him for the majority of the season and it flared up on him. And he was a late scratch prior to game four, did not play game five, and here he is back in there in game six. One up. -oh. High from Walker, two and up. -oh. Victorino 0 for 10 in this World Series steps out looks down at Brian Butterfield the third base coach and can look for a pitch on 2 and 0 ball three Victorino a very smart hitter he may take two pitches from Walker you know he's going to take three and 0 he may take three and one. We'll find out. Talking to John Farrell about putting Victorino back in there, and he said he's just too important to what we need defensively, like having another center fielder while he plays right. This is a tough right field at Fenway. 3 1 pitch. Second walk handed out by Walker. Two on, nobody out. Here in the second. will be a 22 year old against a 21 year old is Xander Bogarts will step in two on nobody out. Red Sox do not like to sacrifice they're a typical American League team. Popped up. It's Molina and free. Molina takes care of out number one. First pitch swinging, and Bogarts is now five for 18 in this World Series. There are two schools of thought on that. One is to take the first pitch after a walk because the pitcher is more inclined to be wild. The one to which I subscribe, and, and most big league hitters do, is because the pitcher's having a tough time throwing the ball in the strike zone. Then he's going to find the middle of the plate and go up there swinging. Bogarts did, but popped it up. Here is Stephen Drew, who's been frustrated, but he has not let it affect his defense. We had a chance to talk to him, and while he's bothered, he is not helpless 
at the plate, a guy who drove in 67 runs and hit 253. He takes strike one. He thought he had a home run the other night when he flied out to the track in the fifth inning of game five. But he is one for 15 in this World Series and four for 50 in the postseason. A free agent to be. Two on, one out. One ball, one strike. Yeah, in the postseason, it's a lot tougher driving balls out when you pull it because of that heavier fall air. Cardinals put their first two on at the top of the inning. Didn't score. Red Sox put their first two on this inning. And Matt Carpenter has out number two. A chance for Boston slipping away unless David Ross, who got the big hit in game five, can come up with something out of the number nine spot. You hear uh, that term in baseball, clutch hitting. You rarely hear clutch pitching. But it's just as important with men on base to pitch well as it is to hit well from an offensive standpoint. A hit by Gomes, a walk to Victorino, then two foul outs. And now it's David Ross who is three for 12 with one important RBI. That came two nights ago in a two run seventh. Broke a 1 1 tie. And he's up there swinging the bat well, strike one. First year with Boston for David Ross. Last year was with Atlanta. John Farrell likes the way he's been looking at the plate and behind him. One ball, one strike. Salta Lamacchia had the majority of the starts behind the plate this year for Boston, but they're riding David Ross. Two on, two out. Strike two. Boy, did that time loss up. Fastball up and in to David. When a hitter has to bring his hands in like that, you got him. You may not get him the next time, but you got him for that pitch. Runners at first and second, two out. Checks one foul. Jim Joyce. Ross strikes out, and Waka is out of the jam with a 95 mile per hour fastball to get Ross. Each side put their first two on, each side left. Two in the second. Third inning rolls in game six. Cardinals and Red Sox no score.
Find new roads. Beautiful night, all things considered. The end of October, the 30th, 47 degrees. Forecast is clear and supposedly the same for tomorrow if there is a game seven. John Lackey would like to be the guy on the mound for the Red Sox as they try to clinch it here in front of their home fans for the first time in 95 years. Here's Discalso, the number nine batter, strike one. Lackey gave up back to back hits in the second, then went right through Adams, Freeze, and John Jay. Discalso takes strike two. Discalso 0 for 6 in this World Series, three hits this postseason. Matt Carpenter on deck. Back to the top of the order. Right now, struck him out. Second strikeout for John Lackey. And Discalso never took the bat off his shoulder. Yeah, and two other uh, Cardinal hitters took the first two strikes also. I'm sure, that's something that uh, John Mabry, the left handed hitting coach of the Cardinals, that's a concern right there. We talked about how important it was first time through the order. The Cardinals haven't scored, but. Carpenter lines a base hit into center. Just past the outstretched glove of Stephen Drew, one on one out. So Carpenter saw Descalso take all three pitches and decided, uh uh, that's not going to happen to me, and ropes one in the center field. Carpenter, who led the National League with 199 hits, has just his sixth hit of this World Series and only his 13th. Of the postseason. Here's Beltron who hit a 2 0 pitch hard but was retired his first time. Might be. It is a double play. 6 3 to end the top of the third. Lackey, a quick and easy third inning. Top of the order coming up for the Red Sox. No score.
track Sirens, Pearl Jam's new album, Lightning Bolt. Ryan Biederman, Victor Gonzalez putting those together all postseason long. Here we are, game six of the World Series, no score, third inning, Ellsbury. Another breaking ball from Walker. We've seen more of that tonight in game six than the Red Sox saw, certainly in game two. He likes to start at bats with that pitch. But he'll make his millions with his changeup. And fastball. That curveball right now, a show me curveball. One ball, one strike on Ellsbury leading it off. And that's hard hit, a base hit through the right side. And the Red Sox put their leadoff man on for the second straight inning. And for the Red Sox, they're concerned on what their leadoff man can do once he gets on. 52 stolen bases on the season. That's seven more than the Cardinals had as a team. So Ellsbury on, and he has not tried to steal yet against Yadier Molina. Batter is Pedroia, and a check on Ellsbury. That was something we talked about coming into this series, the presence of Molina, who just won his sixth straight Gold Glove Award. And a guy who threw out 43% of potential base dealers this year, and Ellsbury. On the outside corner from Waka, strike one. So no stolen base attempts by Ellsbury. If that continues, He'd be the first player to not try to steal a base in the World Series after stealing 50 or more during the regular season since Omar Moreno in 1979. That's foul. And the count 0 2. Here's the ALCS game six against the Tigers. And then the first inning tonight, jumping on the first pitch, and it hooked foul. Pedroia has come close twice, does not have a home run this postseason. Man, Ellsbury leaning, but the tag is too late. He was taken off. Sure looked like it. Not only does he have to watch Waka on the pickoff, but he's got to watch Molina on the pickoff. Yadier did not have any pickoffs this year. That was close, but he's back. But Molina has 23 pickoffs in the last five years. Here's the 0 2. Shattered back. Freeze. Gets the out at first. Down to second. Ellsbury one away. Here comes David Ortiz, and here's a conversation between home plate umpire Jim Joyce and Yadier Molina the last time he was up. This guy is unbelievable. He's oh, yeah, fun right. to watch. He even gets a good hack on the yeah. pitcher out there. That was Molina who said, this guy is unbelievable, and Jim Joyce saying he's fun to watch, and he has been fun to watch. But with first base open, we're not going to watch him do anything except take a walk down to first. Going to bring up Napoli. We talked to Mike Matheny before the game about Ortiz being in that Barry Bonds treatment category where any chance you get to take the bat out of his hands. You have to do it. Matheny said he's already been there. We've just had to at certain times pitch to him. Not here. And there are the numbers and the reason why he won't get a chance to swing here in the third inning. Two on one out for Mike Napoli. John Lackey, Red Sox starter tonight, remembers that Bonds treatment back in 2002 when the Angels won a world championship against the San Francisco Giants. 
Napoli digging his way in. First start since game two when he faced Michael Walker. And in that game, Walker had two on, nobody out in the fourth inning and got Napoli to bounce into a double play. Runners on at first and second. Napoli. Strike one. Carpenter keeping an eye on Ellsbury at second base. If Waka gets into a bad pattern of not looking back there, Ellsbury could try to steal third. Inside a ball and a strike. Matheny, the Cardinal manager, wanted to take Michael Walker and have him as one of his starters out of spring training. The Cardinal organization and general manager John Mozalock, they helped pace the workload for Walker to have him ready in case the Cardinals got into this spot. Here he is in game six. And a strikeout for out number two. Wow, that was a buzz ball. Let's take a look at the sequence, the pitch by pitch. Fastball inside corner, fastball inside, fouled off. <laughs> that last pitch was some gas. And now it's Johnny Gomes. Into that mitt with a split that Molina uses. <laughs> You see what Walk has been able to do when the opposition has threatened. Gomes has a single tonight. Two on, two out. Ball one high. Lead runner is Ellsbury. Great speed. David Ortiz behind him at first. in strike one. Only RBIs in this World Series for Johnny Gomes. On the two out three run home run in game four which was the difference. Two on two out here and he gets thrilled. That'll load him up. Walker trying to come inside to Johnny Gomes. I think it hit that padding in the left elbow of Gomes. But uh, probably hurts, but not as much as it would without that padding. Caught the padding and caught his left forearm. He didn't flinch. The bases are loaded two out for Shane Victorino. Victorino bases loaded and you can see Victorino he is no stranger to being hit by a pitch he's been hit seven times this postseason and he's already got a grand slam in this postseason 2-0 I saw the same thing he almost leaned into that curveball on that first pitch without attempting to get out of the way then the fastball was a ball here it is again. See, the pitch was low, and here is two grand slams. 2008 Division Series against Milwaukee and Sabathia, while with Philly, and then Game Six of this year's ALCS, and the clincher of Jose Barris. Victorino was two for 23 before he hit that grand slam. He's 0 for 10 in this World Series, waiting for a 2-0 pitch here. Waiting for a 2-0 fastball from Waka. It's 
see Molina just trying to slow things down. Mm -hmm. Here's a 2 0. 2 and 1, and Molina held it over the outside corner. Here comes a 2 1 pitch. High fly ball to left. This ball is off the monster. One run scores. Here comes Ortiz. Here comes Gomes. He is safe. And it's 3 0 Boston. When you fall behind, your pitches are predictable. Falling behind 2 0, Victorino takes the fastball, and on the 2 1 pitch, knowing he was going to get the fastball, he hits the wall. And then a mild argument by Molina as we take another look at Johnny Gomes sliding in. And Jim Joyce got that call right. He did. He reached for the left leg, did Molina, but it wasn't there. That's that straight in slide, no hook slide by Gomes, and that's why he's safe at home. It was game six in the ALCS for Victorino. It's game six in this World Series. No grand slam, but he hit it hard with a count in his favor. And the Red Sox lead 3-0. Now Victorino at third, two out for Bogarts. Ball one. Walker's 1-0. Walker frustrated. Victorino anything but. And it's his first hit of this World Series. It's Victorino unloading the bases and starting a celebration at Fenway in the third. We're after three in game six. Red Sox on top. Three nothing.
TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. And by the Galaxy Note 10.1, the next big thing is here. Shane Victorino with the biggest swing of the night. Here's Holiday off the plate, checking on the left side. Bogarts charging. Got it. One away. First question for John Farrell, manager of the Red Sox, was how they're feeling down in that dugout after the Victorino ball off the wall. Well, it's better than it was the inning before. I tell you what, Walker's made some huge pitches in some key spots, and you know he gets a big strike out, strike out on Napoli after the walk to, to Poppy. But uh, you know he back the, the hit by pitch to, to Gomes obviously doesn't give him a whole lot of breathing room. And, and Vic, who came up big in Game Six against Detroit with a grand slam, similar swing tonight. John Lackey has made some big pitches too, hasn't he, John? Yeah, it really has. You know, the, the curveball he threw to, to Jay to get the, the final out in that second inning was key. And, you know, he, he's been so good for us so much this year. And, and tonight was another example of that in, that in that inning. I asked you before the game about Victorino getting back in there. You said he's been so big for us, what he does defensively. And then, you know, here he comes up with this big hit. This is a big night. And he's done that a lot for you this season. Yeah, he sure has. You know, and, and since he's gone to the right side of the plate, his right handed swing fits his ballpark so well. He's able to get out in front. He can hook some balls off that wall. And that was the case. But, uh, you know, Joe, before we go, I just want to tell Tim, you know what? All of us are going to miss you. You've had a great run, great career. All the best to us, from us to you, and congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate well, it, guys. You. Thanks, John. Class act. He's been that way the entire postseason. Very upfront with us as we've covered the Red Sox during the ALCS. And a salute to you, Tim. Very nice. In your final postseason here at Fox. Here is a 2 1 pitch to Alan Craig. 2 and 2. John Farrell set the tone early in spring training after a dismal season last year here in Boston. 93 losses. Last place finish, 26 games out. Worst record for the Red Sox in 48 years. And here they are, leading game six, leading this World Series tonight, three to nothing. And when the Red Sox uh, came back in 2004 to beat the Yankees after being down three games to nothing and then sweeping the Cardinals four in a row, John Farrell was the farm director of the Cleveland Indians. Has held quite a few titles. Breaking balls driven into left field, and Alan Craig's two for two. That was a hanger from John Lackey, and it's one on one out here in the fourth inning. That was a real hanger right there. And the one thing's pretty clear about Alan Craig if he can't run that well when he's the lead runner, it's going to clog things up for the Cardinals. Cardinals uh, hopeful that somebody can do something in front of Craig so he's not the lead runner but a trail runner middle guy or the last guy. Here's Yadier Molina strike one. John Farrell then was here as Terry Francona's pitching coach between 2007 and 2010. Spent two years as a manager in Toronto and boy did this organization bring the right guy in. I say. In 2013. Molina grounds to Pedroia who boots it and it's two on with one out. A rare miscue from Dustin Pedroia who was thinking double play and he gets nobody. And with Molina's wheels he is not a fast runner. The big thing is Alan Craig got to second faster than I, I think any of the Cardinals thought he could. Even though Pedroia bobbled the ball I thought he may have a play on Craig to get the force out. But Allen running as fast as he can down to second base. That for Dustin Pedroia. Who just received word today that he's a gold glove award winner. His first error of the postseason. Now the Cardinals have the tying run at the plate. Matt Adams, two on, one out. Strike one from Lackey. Adams has one home run this postseason. That came in the clinching Game Five win in St. Louis over Pittsburgh in the division series. None since. That's into left field. It is. Throw behind Craig and he's back in time. Two on, two out. 
Johnny Gomes has become very comfortable in left field with the monster out there. One ball hit over his head tonight. He made two catches against the wall. And on that play, he comes in. I think shallow. Carl Yastrzemski used to tell me, play shallow in left field, away from the wall, because balls over your head are balls like that. Make sure you can make plays like this. Now it's David Freeze with two on, two out. Craig and Molina, the runners. Freeze, strike one. Cardinals are 0 for their last 11 with runners in scoring position in this series. Freeze fly to right with two on one out his first time up. It's two on two out. Fastball misses one ball one strike. Red Sox went three straight games with two errors in this World Series. It was an errorless game five. An error has opened the door here in the fourth inning. Strike two on freeze. Sox lead three nothing after three and a half.
winner of the 2013 MLB Fan Cave. Congratulations to Danny Ferris, the 2013 Ultimate MLB Fan Cave Dweller. For your chance to be a part of the 2014 MLB Fan Cave team, apply now at MLBFanCave.com. 3 nothing Boston as they bat in the bottom of the fourth inning. Walker brings it home. Pitch number 59 has hit a ton into right center. Back at the wall. It is gone. 4 nothing Red Sox. Home run, Stephen Drew. Two on, two out his first time. Two and two. Lance Lynn, the game four starter, gets loose. Here's a two two. Strikeout number five for Michael Walker. Let's go back to the home run. Experienced hitters like Drew will go up there. He's got power. You said 13 home runs. Look for that fastball. If he gets something else, he'll take it. He got the fastball. And did pop it up. Now Ellsbury, who got that three-run rally started last inning, takes a changeup down and in ball one. It for the second time in this game from Derek Lilliquist, the Cardinal, Cardinal pitching coach is Waka. It's been a long time since he's given up hits this loud, this hard. Yeah, I was just thinking, Joe, even though David Ortiz did not get a hit his first two times up, he has made his presence felt. The intentional walk. With Ellsbury on at second base and one out, and then the hit batsman in Johnny Gomes, and then the key hit, Shane Victorino's double. It was two outs, I beg your pardon, but that double to clear the bases. So even though Ortiz didn't get a hit, he scored a run and made his presence known. A homer, a double in the inning. Now it's Pedroia. 
Dustin committed the error in the top of this inning. He committed only five all year. And when you consider the amount of ground he is able to cover, covering the ground and then making good throws, easy to see why he won the gold glove. Two and zero. Change up from Waka. Surprise Randy Choate's not up because Randy Choate has been a one hitter pitcher, even though it is the fourth inning. But if Pedroia gets on via a walk or something like that, then a right hander's got to pitch to David Ortiz. You may not have another situation where a left hander's up there where you can use Choate for one hitter. It's the immediacy of even the middle innings. In an elimination situation, here's a 2 2. Oh, nine. That's right. You can wait around for the seventh or eighth, but it may be too late. Mm -hmm. Look at the first four starts throughout this postseason three earned runs tonight, four. Here comes a 2 2 pitch to Pedroia. High fly ball. Center Beltron back two out tagging going to third is Ellsbury and Pedroia is over three. Here comes David Ortiz and with Napoli coming up next. You expect the walk, right? And we'll get the walk. And these fans jammed into Fenway Park, hoping to see the Red Sox win it all here at home for the first time in 95 years. Want to see their DH swing the bat. This will be his third walk, second intentional. Here tonight. That'll put runners at the corners with two out for Napoli. And that's going to be it for Waka. Second visit of the inning. And Matheny is going to take the ball from the rookie who was brilliant this postseason. Lance Lynn coming in. The rookie, Michael Wonka, exits. Red Sox lead 4 0. It started with Victorino, who played wall ball to clear the bases. Steven drew a home run in this fourth inning. Red Sox having fun so far in game six. Up for nothing.
Red Sox figured him out here tonight. And Lance Lynn takes over first and third two out. Pitching in relief this postseason for the second time. Strike one. Lynn came out of the bullpen and won game one of the NLCS against the Dodgers a 13 inning night. Napoli one ball one strike. Look at the supportive look in the eyes of Yadier Molina. Great shot. As Waka exited here at Fenway Park. Molina will be catching Waka for years to come. Here's one into center. A base hit. And it's 5 nothing Boston on a hit by Napoli. Once again, when Napoli was a catcher for the Texas Rangers two years ago, he saw what the Cardinals could do. They came out of nowhere to win the next two games and take the World Series from the Texas Rangers. Trying his best for that not to happen again. Two on, two out, two runs home, a five to nothing Boston lead. Here's Johnny Gomes. He has a hit, been hit by a pitch, and he takes the ball low from Lance Lynn. How about that shot, that amazing shot with that slow motion camera of the bat vibrating? Those waves going through, the ball hit on the end of the bat by a very strong man to drive in the fifth run of this ball game. That's his fourth RBI. He did not have any since his first at bat of this World Series. That's up and in. 2 and 0. One more time. Check this out. Goes for a two out RBI single into center. Johnny Gomes trying to add to a five run Boston lead. Up on the count here, three and oh. Victorino may get yet another chance with the bases loaded. their spots in this World Series. Napoli is only hit prior to the RBI single in this fourth inning, a three-run double in game one. Gomes was 0 for 9 before a three-run home run in game four. David Ross, 2 for 10 until the game-winning RBI in game five. And then Victorino was 0 for 10 before the three-run double in the third inning. It goes after the first pitch, pops it up, right side, out of play. could throw in Stephen Drew if you want on that list he was one for 16 with an infield single he fits that list absolutely before his leadoff home run here in the fourth Victorino in his postseason career with the bases loaded five for seven with two grand slams and 19 RBIs he has another chance that's a hit to left. One run scores. That's Ortiz. They hold Napoli. It's 6 nothing. Oh, 
Shane Victorino, 20 RBIs. With the bases loaded in his postseason career, a line drive into left. Slider, and he hits in front of Matt Holliday. Good throw by Holiday. Strong throw. Not a good throw, but a strong one to keep Napoli at third. Everybody moved up one spot. Mike Matheny's going back to his bullpen for the eighth man to bat in the inning. Lance Lynn didn't get anybody. Seth Maness checks in. It's game six. It's all Boston so far up six nothing here in the fourth. Bases are loaded. Seth Main is on the mound. Two out. Xander Bogart's at the plate. First pitch swinging again. Strike one. David Ortiz. The Cardinals have elected to pitch around David Ortiz all night. Others have stepped up. Doesn't this shot say it all about game six? Victorino and Arnie Baylor smiling at first base while the Cardinals make. Their second pitching change here in the fourth. Strike two on Bogarts. So you pitch around David Ortiz with good reason. Napoli an RBI single behind him in this inning. Victorino a three run double. Now another RBI hit. Drew a home run. It's 6 0. The 0 2. The strikeout ends the inning. It's been a lot of Shane Victorino and the Red Sox tonight. Why do you love October? To go crazy with my teammates.
Fox Sports 1, America's new 24-hour sports network. And it all tips off on November 8th as Boston College takes on the Providence Friars at 6 Eastern. Your new home for Big East basketball. Fox Sports 1, to find it on your provider, go to foxsports1.com right now. Here's John Jay. Fifth inning and a strike starts the at-bat from John Lackey. Lackey pitched around a hit and an error in the fourth inning. He's allowed four hits on the night. One and one on Jay who struck out his first time. He was batting in the second with no score at the time. Second and third two out. And Lackey got him. Strike two. Kevin Segris, the left-hander getting loose. Here's a one two two and two the first World Series that we did together was back in 1996 in game four the New York Yankees were trailing the Atlanta Braves six to nothing. Here's a chopper going to test Stephen Drew loves it throws it away. It stays in play and the leadoff man is on. Joe Torrey had a meeting with his hitters and said let's cut it in half the New York Yankees scored three in the sixth they tied it on a three run home run by Jim Larence on Mark Wohlers and then they won the game in the 10th inning. I'm sure the Cardinals would take that right now to cut this lead in half. It's discalso. No ruling yet as to whether that's a hit or an error it's a base hit. For John Jay, his third hit of this World Series. He's on, Descalso up. Strike one outside corner from Lackey. As many hits tonight for the Cardinals against Lackey as they had in game two when he got into the seventh. Lackey suffered the loss that night, but the bullpen could not hang on to the lead. Here's a 1 1 to Descalso. Strike two. There's the night so far for the Boston right hander. A 1 2. That is line caught by Drew. One away. by Stephen Drew. Ball hit hard, but Drew was there. Making sure. And it's one on one out. Back to the top of the order. Descalso. Still hitless in this World Series. Now 0 for 8. Carpenter singled his last time up. Hit the ball hard twice, and he takes a strike. Where Lackey is first pitch striking the Cardinals. Throughout this game, a confidence of a six run lead. 15 of 19 first pitch strikes by Lackey tonight. One ball, one strike. a 1 1 pitch hard hit base hit into right and it's two on with one out for Carlos Beltran who has 16 career postseason home runs Beltran hit a 2 0 pitch hard into shallow right his first time Pedroia was there waiting for it got the out bounced into a double play in the third inning. And now bats with two on and one out here in the fifth. Cardinals looking for that big hit. Trying to jump back into this game. Ball one. And Ross 
Ellis is going to go chat with Lackey. Well, we have a second. Let's go down to Aaron Andrews. Joe, the one thing John Lackey has had throughout this playoff run is perspective. And I talked to him before game five in St. Louis, and he said the one thing he's really trying to do is enjoy this run. He said, it's taken me 11 years to get back here. And with everything I've been through in Boston, I'm doing things I haven't done before, sitting in the dugout, taking in all the games, cheering on my teammates. I asked him about the perspective he'd have tonight on the mound. He said, eh, I'll be ticked off as usual. He drops a curveball in with a 1-0 count. That evens. And this at bat for Beltran, one ball, one strike. Jay, the lead runner at second. Matt Carpenter at first. Down and in, two and one. That's what Beltron has done this postseason. Eight for ten with runners in scoring position. Here's a two one. Two and two. is Jay first and third two down last year in the division series game five final game of that series in Washington the Cardinals trailed six to nothing in that winner take all game and came back to win nine to seven to get into the NLCS which they led three games to one Heading back to the West Coast after losing a game five to Barry Zito up three games to two losing to the Giants the eventual world champs after their four game sweep of Detroit now it's first and third two out for Matt Holliday strike one if you're John Lackey you stay away from Holliday the Cardinals have pitched him inside the whole series. But now, if you miss inside, the Cardinals could cut it in half. You don't want that. He's going to hit the ball hard. Make him hit it hard the other way. Here's the 0 1. Setting up outside. Now the count 0 2. And a guy who says he sees the ball better here in this part than any other. And this crowd wants the top of the fifth to end right here. Six. Lackey doing his part. Victorino doing his part. Six nothing Boston.
Chevrolet find new roads. This November, some cops are born, others are made. Get ready for the next evolution of cop drama. Don't miss the show. Critics are calling obsession worthy, almost human. It's a two night premiere starting Sunday, November 17th on Fox. Kevin Segrist is the new pitcher. And a fastball misses for ball one to Stephen Drew. Fourth pitcher of the night. For St. Louis, he takes over for Manus, who got one out. One ball, one strike. Drew, then Ross, then Ellsbury. The Red Sox leading six to nothing, bottom of the fifth. Segrist brings it. Breaking ball misses, ball two. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Just outside a full count. Drew Homer his last time up. Only his second hit. Second RBI in this series. Now he hits a rocket to Matt Adams. One out. Go back to ALCS game two. Bases loaded. David Ortiz with a grand slam. And there's now famous officer Steve Horgan in the bullpen to start that fourth inning celebrating again. He's a good luck charm out in that bullpen for the Boston Red Sox. And they honor him here at Fenway. Absolutely. One out, nobody on. The batter is David Ross. Ball one inside. Ross 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts, but he's made his presence felt in this World Series behind the plate and at it. That RBI double to unlock a 1 1 game in game five. Strike one. You think about how things changed after that grand slam by David Ortiz. Had, it, had he not hit that grand slam, the, the Red Sox probably lose that game. They're down 2 nothing, going back to Detroit and facing Verland. They only scored one run against Verland or anyway. Lackey came up with a great game. But I mean, they could very easily have been down three games to none had Ortiz not hit that grand slam home run. A two out grand slam. Yeah. Off Joaquin Benoit. The closer for the Tigers. As it is, the Red Sox wrap that ALCS up in six games, and shortly thereafter, Jim Leland announces his retirement as manager of the Tigers. Now we're in game six of the World Series. The Red Sox lead three games to two, and lead game six, six to nothing. A little bit after 10 o'clock in the East, so a game summary is we play here at Fenway Park. Shane Victorino with four RBIs tonight. Stephen Drew has an RBI, Napoli the other. 95 years since the Red Sox clinched it all here at Fenway 1918. 2-2. Into center, Jay is back. Two out. Batter will be Ellsbury, who is headed for free agency whenever this World Series is over. As is the Cardinal right fielder, Carlos Beltran. As is Stephen Drew, the shortstop for the Red Sox.
Segrist with two out. Strike one. Ellsbury two for three tonight. And now six out of 23 in this World Series. He scored twice. And Joe, he will have a lot of suitors this winter. You know that. The 0 1. Ken Rosenthal is with us. Where do you think Ellsbury is headed in free agency? Well, Joe, he is from Oregon, and the Seattle Mariners need a center fielder and a leadoff hitter. They have money to spend. That is one obvious choice. Another could be Texas. That's a team that has long coveted Ellsbury. That is down for ball two, two and one. Kenny, it seems like everything you read leads you to believe these are the last days, maybe the last day in a Red Sox uniform for Ellsbury. That's a ground ball to second. Booted by Carpenter. Ellsbury is on. And the top of the fifth inning. Rather, the bottom half continues, and it looks like another error on Carpenter, his third of the postseason. And it is. One on, two out, and the batter will be Pedroia. Dustin rewarded with a contract extension. A new deal to keep him here in Boston. John Axford, the big right hander, gets loose. An error continues this fifth. Pedroia, 0 for 3 tonight. It continues and he's safe back to the bat. Now the one thing you try not to do is to get a pitcher part the rundown. They're not conditioned for rundowns and Ellsbury with a great job to get by Kevin Segrist. Up too far. Ellsbury knew it. He gets back to the bat. Albeit a lot tired than he would have been. But not just giving the out up six to nothing. That's right. And the count's 0 and 1 on Pedroia. They have another chance to run right here. Strike two. Each side has an error now. Each second baseman has an error. Lackey able to pitch around Pedroia's error in the fourth. Segrist trying to pick up Carpenter here in the fifth. Would have gone down as a stolen base attempt if he had been caught. Ellsbury was not. Still has not attempted one. Manus came on last inning, struck out the only batter he faced, Bogarts. First inning of work for Segrist. An error has kept him out there. Here comes a 1 2 pitch. Pedroia flies it into right, easy for Beltron. And we go to the sixth inning. Game six 
It's six nothing. Red Sox on top. is dealing again. He won in the division series. He beat Justin Verlander in the ALCS. And he's trying to get his first World Series win since 2002. 77 pitches on the night. He's into the sixth inning now up six to nothing. And the batter will be Alan Craig who has two of the six St. Louis hits. Single to lead off the second, single with one out in the fourth. He is now six out of 14 in this World Series as he skies one into center for Ellsbury. One out. Battle will be Molina. The World Series on Fox is sponsored by Walmart. Save money, live better, Walmart. By Thor, The Dark World, in theaters November 8th. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. One out, nobody on for Molina. He's been on base twice with a hit. He reached on an error. Hard hit. Pedroia picks it. Gets the out. Two gone. Even Dustin has to smile after that. He has every reason to smile after this play. Vintage Pedroia. I don't know if he was smiling because of the play he made or because of that little looper he threw over to Napoli, realizing Molina was running and he had plenty of time. Either way, he has been a joy over the years to watch. Here's Matt Adams. You pick 
the era. You pick the team in whatever era you want to pick. And Dustin Pedroia would fit right in. Any of them. Adams 0 for 2 and now set up at 0 and 2. Nothing Red Sox into the bottom of the sixth. is looking to raise another four million dollars for stand up to cancer on top of what they donated this past Sunday MasterCard will donate one cent for every MasterCard restaurant purchase of ten dollars and over up to four million dollars for more information is at MasterCard.com slash do good the fans finally get a chance to see David Ortiz who did draw the conventional walk back in the first inning at the end of a long at bat against Michael Walker and was intentionally walked in the third and the fourth. His fans want to see him do something here in game six. The 0 1. One ball, one strike. In a single World Series, most times reaching base. 18. Time with Marty Barrett, Mickey Mantle behind Barry Bonds in 0 2. That was a seven game series. Count two and one. Part of the order Ortiz, Napoli, and Gomes. Out of play, two and two. He just does not swing through pitches. We talked about it in the opening. Starting with this game, he had swung through and swung and missed. 
three of 73. Of course, he's been walked intentionally twice tonight. He is seeing the ball as well as he can see it. There's a 2 2. That is outside. 97 from Segrist. It's a full count. That's an example. Fastball right on the corner, and he held up. He's homered off Segrist already in this series, and he strikes out. At 97 from the rookie left hander. First strikeout in 10 games for David Ortiz. That's 10 postseason games against the best pitchers in the business. And that strikeout is the end of the night for Kevin Segrist. Happily coming up. Carlos Martinez coming in out of the Cardinal pen. Season one out, nobody on in the sixth inning, and Mike Napoli first up. Challenged with a 97 mile per hour fastball. Napoli then goes. Breaking ball is upstairs, a ball and a strike. Napoli with his RBI base hit in the fourth inning. As that breaking ball is low, ball two. Now has 14 World Series RBIs against the Cardinals, which is the most all time. He came in tied with Lou Gehrig with his 13. Two and two. And anytime you are mentioned in the same breath as the Iron Horse. You've done something. Two balls, two strikes. Cardinals in the seventh inning. We'll have the bottom three in their lineup. Freeze, Jay, and Descalso. Here's a 2-2. Got him on the outside corner. Two gone. 
a tough slider from Martinez gets Napoli. He is uh, nicknamed Little Pedro for a reason. What a bright future he has ahead of him. Johnny Gomes will dig his way in. Been on base three times tonight with a walk. Been hit by a pitch. That preceded the three run double by Victorino, and he is single. Strike one. Why does he go by the moniker of Little Pedro? Boston fans saw him number 45 for years here. Holds the glove in the same spot. Yeah. He's got that freedom. Oh, that freedom of shoulder movement. He misses outside. Saw so Pedro, little Pedro, and now we'll see both of them. Here's a one two pitch to Gomes, chopped short. Descalso gets the high hop, gets the out. And Segrist and Martinez have a perfect sixth. Seventh inning rolls in, game six. Cardinals bat down by six back after this. From your local Fox station. Seventh inning rolls in in game six. Chilly night at Fenway Park. First up, David Freeze. Strike one. Freeze is 0 for 2. And he has left four runners on here tonight. Two in the second, two more in the fourth. Fastball in at the knees. Good spot, good pitch, 0 and 2.
having the luxury of getting ahead throwing the ball out of the strike zone and making David freeze commit he did. And with one out nobody on the batter will be John Jay who's one for two. An infield hit his last time up now he checks on Pedroia who gets in front of it gets the out two down. Give you the Geico in game box score for the Cardinals they have six hits. But Lackey has pitched so well with runners in scoring position with guys on so far no runs Alan Craig and Matt Carpenter the only two in the Cardinal lineup with more than one hit. Here's Descalso over two lined out his last time up. The starter, three and two thirds, six runs on five hits. They chant the name of Lackey, a guy who came here in 2010, given a big deal, pitching this October better than he ever has with the Boston Red Sox. Ground ball fair. Pass first down the right field line, and Descalso watches Victorino make a great play to hold Descalso to a two out single. That's what John Farrell, to reiterate what you said earlier, that's why he told us before the game that Victorino gives him so much flexibility in right field. He's by far the best right fielder he has, and he shows it. The premium tonight is four runs driven in also. First World Series hit for Descalso here in 2013. And the batter is Matt Carpenter. Carpenter has two hits. He takes strike one. A ball and a strike. Strike two. Junichi Tozawa getting loose just in case. You know John Lackey doesn't want to give up the baseball. Never does. Ahead on the count to Carpenter, one and two. Corner there. If it weren't a six to nothing ball game, I think Descalso tries to score. But when you're trailing by six in the seventh inning, no chance can Jose Alquindo send Descalso at third base. You gotta hold him up. Now it's Beltron who again has a chance to cut the lead in half. Had two on back in the fifth and fly to right. Second and third. Beltron takes strike one. 
little more urgency with Tozawa in the bullpen. Beltron four for four this postseason with runners in scoring position two out. Strike two. One of the quirkinesses, if that's a word, here at Fenway Park. Is when a ball's down in that left field corner, the third base coach almost has to go out to the line to see it because from the box, you can't see down there. But holding them up was certainly proper. Here's the 0 2. Base hit left field. One run scores. Carpenter will be held at third. The Cardinals are on the board. It's a six to one game as Beltron knocks home Descalso through the deserted third base position. The shift was on, so the shift giveth and taketh away. Here it taketh away. And now with runners at the corners. And two out. Holiday coming up. Lackey's going to do his best to try and stay in this game. And he convinced John Farrell to leave him in. This is my guy, he says to John Farrell before he even gets out there. He told Mike Sosha that about within the last six years. This is mine, Sosh. This is mine, Sosh. Mike Sosh, the manager of the Angels. Here's Holiday. First and third, two out. And again, keep the ball away. Holiday could make this a two run game. If he does, make him hit it out to right, not left. Ball one strike. Holiday homered here in game one. He homered two nights ago in game five. 0 for 3 tonight and 1 for 13 against John Lackey. Straight hits. Holiday. That gets away. It'll send Beltron down to second. And it's a 3 1 count on the Cardinal left fielder. Now a single cuts it in half. Should be the second wild pitch of the night for John Lackey. It is. Holiday sitting on a pitch on three and one. Fouled straight back. And it's a full count. Holiday had a pitch to hit then and missed it. It's fouled it back. Straight fastballs to Matt Holiday from Lackey. Holiday four home runs this postseason. Came into tonight a career in 10 games, 381 hitter in this park. The last hurdle for Lackey. And he has walked. 
to load the bases. David Ross is going to go out. Farrell is going to come out, and that's it for Lackey. Alan Craig is coming up. And these fans will let John Lackey feel their appreciation in game six. Bases loaded two out in a five run game here in the seventh. Alan Craig coming up. Hit 454 during the regular season with runners in scoring position. Third highest average since 1974. Alan Craig in his career with the bases loaded has hit 424, including the postseason. Lackey's night is over. He gives way to Tozawa with the bases loaded in a five run game. Alan Craig, two for three tonight. Lights up with men on. Ball one. The Cardinals' only grand slam during World Series play hit by Ken Boyer at Yankee Stadium, game four of 1964. Here's a 1 0. Ground ball stopped by Napoli. Flips for the out. And the Cardinals now have left nine. They get only one and trail by five. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a World Series to remember in more ways than one. Thanks to the support you've shown 
for our troops all season long. Bank of America recently donated one million dollars to welcome back veterans and wounded warrior project to help our service members and veterans succeed here at home. And as a result of the overwhelming gratitude you've shown for their service. Bank of America will continue to donate one dollar for each message of support using hashtag troop thanks through the conclusion of this World Series. And now we join PA announcer Henry Mahegan for the introduction of God Bless America. To lead us in the singing of God Bless America and representing all of the active duty, reserve, guard, and civilian professionals faithfully serving in the United States Air Force across the globe, please welcome Master Sergeant Jennifer Dashnov, Technical Sergeant Richard Vasquez, Technical Sergeant Nico Ellison, and Staff Sergeant Rachel Weber, the United States Air Force Heritage of America Quartet. by Bank of America, proud supporter of our service members and veterans. 
by T-Mobile with global data coverage in over 100 countries and no extra charge. And by Taco Bell, sometimes you've got to live Moss. Here's Shane Victorino, the hitting star tonight. He's got four of the six RBIs for Boston. He missed two games with a bad back. Breaking ball stays inside. They count one and one. When Shane was a senior in high school in Hawaii, he kicked a 48 yard field goal. University of Hawaii offered him a scholarship to be a defensive back. After tonight, I think Shane made the right decision. Yeah, right? he's involved in his third World Series. He's already got a ring. First year with the Red Sox is Brandon Workman. The guy who started the season in double A is getting loose. Count's gone to two and one from Carlos Martinez. Fly ball into left. To get it. One out. Let's look at what the Red Sox have been able to do throughout this postseason. They took care of Matt Moore and David Price at the Tampa Bay Rays in the division series in games one and two. They got Verlander in game three, Scherzer in game six during the ALCS. And now here in this World Series, they've defeated. The top starter for the Cardinals, Adam Wainwright, two times in games one and five. Here's a fly ball into right. Two out. In this World Series, Adam Wainwright is 0-2 with an ERA of 4.50 as he's gone head-to-head -head with John Lester twice. And Lester Tim is 2-0 in this World Series, one earned run, and 15 in a third innings pitch. And he's four and one this postseason with an ERA of just over one and a half. Being masterly with that cutter inside and outside to right handed batters. Stephen Drew takes a strike. This is a Red Sox team that is up here in game six, six to one. Lead this World Series prior to this inning as a group, hitting only 214. But they have had big hits from different guys when it's mattered the most. He has one of them, which happened in game five to break a 1 1 tie in a two run seventh. Here's a fly ball into left, a base hit. And Stephen Drew is two for four tonight. Red Sox fans in the area were chanting for Jose Iglesias to play instead of Stephen Drew. Iglesias was traded to the Detroit Tigers, and then Stephen Drew had to battle Xander Bogarts, who is a natural shortstop. And yet John Farrell persisted with the best defensive shortstop he had, and Drew has rewarded him. With two hits tonight, one a home run. And really good defense throughout oh, the yeah. entire postseason. Yeah. One on, two out. Ross takes ball one. In the eighth inning, St. Louis will have Molina, Adams, and Freeze. Workman getting ready for that. Zawa came on to get Alan Craig on a ground out with the bases loaded as Martinez checks on Drew. Started for the Cardinals down by five.
big awards to the big deals. Nobody covers the offseason like MLB Network. With three primetime shows and TV's only morning show dedicated to baseball. It's on MLB Network beginning Monday, November 4th. Third pitcher of the night. Lackey was tremendous. Six and two thirds, one run, nine hits, five strikeouts, one walk. Tozawa got the only man he faced. The bases loaded in the seventh. And here's Brandon Workman. Big piece of the bullpen puzzle for John Farrell this October. Yadier Molina first up. Strike one. Workman was the losing pitcher in game three in St. Louis, the game that ended with that obstruction call at third base. Red Sox won game four. They won game five. They lead game six. Here's the 0 1. With six outs to get five runs at least. Here's a one, two, two and two. Bullpen for the Red Sox is quiet. Breslow has been up. Cardinals proved in the seventh inning that this game is not over. Leaving the bases loaded, they've stranded nine. 2-2 two, two pitch to Molina. Into right field. Victorino got a good jump. One out. He almost got too good of a jump. You're right. Almost overran it. Here's Jim Joyce, the home plate umpire, making a friend here at Fenway. How are you? How long have you been coming here? Uh, 70 years. Yeah, every game. Absolutely. <laughs> Great to see you. Pretty good. Later on. And there he is. That's since 1953 he's been coming here. So he saw the splendid splinter many times. First pitch of ball to Matt Adams. Cardinals still do not have an RBI from the six through nine spots. And they've had their chances here tonight. But that group hasn't had an RBI in this series. There's Pedroia. Two out. Here's David Freeze, who struck out his last time 0 for 3. Cardinal third baseman without an RBI in this World Series. Freeze. Strike one.
Only Ford gives you EcoBoost, fuel economy, and a whole lot more. By MasterCard, preferred card of Major League Baseball since 1997. And by AT&T, rethink possible. Sixth pitcher of the night for St. Louis, it's Randy Cho. Six to one Red Sox, bottom of the eighth. Ball one outside. Ellsbury tonight has been on base three times with two hits. They reached on an error. Two and oh. Closer for the Red Sox getting loose. One of the few non save situations he'll come into. Choke walks the leadoff man. And on the heels of that walk, we'll send it to Aaron Andrews. Joe, thank so much. I'm here with Arthur D'Angelo, who's been a season ticket holder here at Fenway Park for 65 years. These same seats, three generations with him here tonight. He has never missed a game. What would it be like for you to finally see the Red Sox win a World Series game here? Great feeling. Financially, I'm all set in life. <laughs> but this is continued for the next generation and generation to come. Now, he actually told me you need to hurry up because I have to go back to work. You work at a convenience store across the street that sells hats and shirts. How well you think you're going to do tonight? 65 years I've been doing that. So I'll keep doing it as long as I live. I'm 88 years of age. I don't know how long I'm going to be around. But I'll keep doing it as long as I can. Joe, back up to you then. All right. Thanks to both of you. Bottom of the eighth, pitching change. Trevor Rosenthal takes over in the eighth. This postseason, he's got four saves, just trying to keep it a five-run game. Dustin Pedroia first to face him. Dustin does so much day in and day out for this Red Sox team. As he fouls it away, he has got a streak. It's in jeopardy here. He came in having reached base in 20 straight. Home postseason games, which is the best streak in franchise history. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Make it 0 for 4 with two ground outs, two fly outs, and waiting for an 0 1 from Trevor Rosenthal. And a check on Ellsbury. Here is an 0-1 pitch. 
Shot to second. Out at second. No throw to first. And we came into this game talking about the pitching and the matchup of the kid and the veteran. And tonight it was the veteran, John Lackey, and he's been. He's been just like this really all postseason. Uh, he has just been brilliant throughout the postseason. Uh, I think the biggest game, well, of course, the biggest game is a clincher tonight uh, for his start. He did his work giving up only one run in six and two thirds. But that game he pitched against Detroit, he'll never forget that game. You ask him in 25, 30 years, what was the best game you ever pitched? He'll answer game three in Detroit. The series was tied in the ALCS at a game of peace, and it was coming on the heels of this man, David Ortiz, hitting that game tying grand slam in game two. It happened with two out in the eighth. Steve Horn, our editorial consultant, was talking during the break about how David Ortiz, if it stays like this, is clearly that'll be a balk, as Rosenthal. Stumbled coming off before he could let go of the baseball. Looks like he uh, got a spike hung up uh, on the pitching rubber, and Mike Matheny out to just to make sure he's all right. He could break an ankle like that. He appears to be all right. He said he was fine. He was yeah. telling Matheny and Greg Hawk to stay in the dugout, but. Just to finish the point about David Ortiz with what he's done at the plate, what Steve was saying, when you look at what John Lester has done on the mound in this World Series, yeah, he's two and zero, oh, one earned run, 15 in the third innings pitched, and in the matchup of the Aces, he got the better of Adam Wainwright, not once but twice in this World Series, and now after the ball. It takes the bat out of the hands of David Ortiz. He has been walked three times now intentionally this evening, scoring two runs in the third and fourth innings. I think I'd give it to Ortiz. I mean, that would be my vote right now. But John Lester. Where would the Red Sox be without John Lester? The answer is you don't know. Well, the series was tied at two apiece, and then Lester beat Wainwright in game five. And now Boston three defensive outs away from their eighth championship in franchise history. Coming up on America's new 24 hour sports network, Fox Sports One, full live post game coverage from Fenway. LeBron in Philly. And Allen Iverson officially retires. It's all coming up on Fox Sports Live. There's a celebration here after tonight's game. It will be covered and covered well. Two on, one out for Napoli. Strike one. Napoli has two hits in this World Series. One was a three run double in game one, and the other an RBI hit in the fourth inning tonight. Strike two. No World Series team in recent memory has made more economic use of their base hits than the Red Sox in this series. Trying to avoid striking out for the fourth time tonight. Two on, one out, nothing into the count. Ball one.
Here's the one two. Two and two. Now a two two. Full count. With three intentional walks handed to Ortiz tonight ties a World Series record. Barry Bonds and Albert Pujols the other two. Here's a 3 2. Strikeout for the second out. We have said it a couple of times already tonight. If it happens here tonight, the Red Sox will clinch a World Series here at home for the first time in 95 years. And a couple of notes. The final game back in 1918 of the win over the Cubs was on September 11th, as you read. The regular season ended on September 2nd due to the World War I work or fight order with two on two out here is Johnny Gomes strike one Babe Ruth pitched a six hit shutout in game one and eight strong innings in a game four win and there's the clincher September 11th game six two to one win Behind Carl Mays. Well, here it is 95 years later, and the Red Sox have worked and fought to get this far. In every round of the postseason, here's a comeback at a Rosenthal. And now they're three outs away. From their eighth championship in franchise history. Let's go to the ninth. Game six. Six to one Boston.
of the 1918 Boston Red Sox. As Koji O'Hara takes over and finds strike one on John Jay. Seven saves, an ERA of .71. Big reason why the Red Sox are in this position. Jay pops it into left center. It's Gomes. One away. Here's Descalso. When the Red Sox won that 1918 World Series, they were a perfect 5 0 in World Series played. And the clincher, Babe Ruth, entered as a defensive replacement in the eighth inning. And it wouldn't be another world championship for 86 years. Babe Ruth was known for his defense, right? Here's a, uh, here's a strike one and one on this council. The 86-year drought ended in 2004. The four game sweep over the Cardinals. That's strike two. And the Red Sox trying to win their third World Series in the past 10 years now. As Descalso pops it up, Gomes is there again. Two out. Great Red Sox fans have not seen a World Series clinching victory here at Fenway. There's not anybody in the stadium tonight who's ever seen it. Strike one on Carpenter. One ball, one strike. Check swing. He held up two and one. Great pitching by Lackey to Zawa. Workman. Big night at the plate for Victorino. That is Rip Fox. Two and two. Piece of Beltron in the on deck circle.
Rose in goal. Shane. Shane, this is the first Red Sox team to win a World Series at Fenway Park since 1918. How much did you guys talk about that, the idea of making history? You know what, honestly, with this team, man, we, we, you know, we focus all year long. Our goal from day one was to you know, be the best team that we could possibly be. Did we know we'd end up here? That was our goal. We worked hard every single day. Hey, we're world champs. Can't believe it. Well, Shane, you've won a World Series, but we all know what happened here in April at the marathon. How much more meaningful is it to win this series in this park, in this city? Hey, all those that were affected in the tragedy, Boston Strong, thank you very much. That's all I got to say. Now, what about your bases loaded with bat, the first one? It seems like you have some magic with the bases loaded in the postseason. Hey, you know, it's just my parents always told me, take every moment, live every moment, love every moment. I just went up there and said, hey, I'm getting another moment. I missed two games. It's time to shine. Do what you can. And I was able to get a, get a good hitter's count. I was able to put a ball off the wall and enjoy every moment of it, Dan. Shane, congratulations. Now over to Aaron Andrews. Kenny, thanks so much. I'm here with John Lackey, who told me back in St. Louis, it's taken 11 years to get back here. And you he also said you weren't going to put it in perspective until it's over. All right, it's over. What does this mean? We're going to have some fun tonight. It was awesome atmosphere here tonight. The guys on the team are so awesome. I'm really fired up to, to just be a part of this. And it's pretty cool. Take a minute. Listen to these fans. You've been through a lot here in Boston, John. How does that sound? Sounds pretty good. <laughs> One more question. We promise to let you go. We saw you fighting your manager. As always, you didn't want to come off the mound. What did you say to him as you took an exit? I probably can't say all that, but uh, I, I wanted to stay in there. I, I wanted to get that last out in that inning. Didn't work out. Taz came in, did a great job, and the rest of the guys in the bullpen shut it down. So great team win for a great team. Great job by you. Enjoy this. Kenny, over to you. Thanks, Aaron. We're here with Johnny Gomes. Johnny, you just instructed me what to ask you. The team was 10-1 and one with you starting in the postseason. How'd that happen? Well, I mean, there's a lot of saver metrics and there's a lot of numbers and stuff, you know, the, the whole war stat, you know, but when we go to playoffs, you know, it's, you want me to go to war with, you know, so, uh, man, I, I say I work inside a museum, but this is the loudest a museum's been in a long time. Now, Johnny, the other night you told me that if the Red Sox won the World Series at Fenway Park for the first time in 95 years, it would be one of the biggest wins in sports history. Why did you say that? Well, I'm a believer in uh, as soon as we went to Fort Myers, the movie's already been written. All we had to do was press play, and this is what happened. Now, the atmosphere in here tonight, the fans chanting, cheering all night long, on their feet. How would you describe it? Well, I think I'd screw it up if I uh, decide to describe it with words. I'm going to describe it with actions when this place is rocking and rolling. Johnny, congratulations. Right on. Joe, back to you. Well said by the starting left fielder here tonight. As Ken said, the Red Sox 10 and 1 when he gets a start in the outfield. And here's the final out on a strikeout. Fitting for Koji Uhara. Such a big part of the championship here with the Red Sox. The celebration is on at Fenway Park. David Ortiz, a likely MVP. The presence in that lineup. John Lester so good on the mound. The bullpen work. The timely hits. The defensive work. The job by guys like Pedroia and Stephen Drew. Pedroia's got his second. Ortiz has got his third. And so do these Red Sox fans over the last 10 years. We'll come back with a trophy presentation. On the other side of the break, Red Sox win the World Series. Back after this.